Okay, so here I'm just going to show a, uh, a demonstration of how we can basically set up an AppSim Classic file uh, and run a basic simulation. I've already got a simulation open here, but to start you just generally open up a new AppSim file. So we'll make this nice and simple. We'll open up an example. So just go to Open, go to your Documents, go to C Drive rather, Program Files, uh, your current AppSim directory, so this is AppSim version 7.8 uh, and then in there you've got an examples folder, so open up examples and then you've got a bunch of different examples here, so I'm just going to pick continuous wheat and so it opens up ok so you've got a little tree here, so the top one obviously says the simulation name, so you can rename that, I might name this example contin wheat and this top file here is the actual the met file uh, and so that's actually the meteorology and so here it's you actually look at this bar at the top here so it's taking out met files so this is taking out a file from Gundawindi in Australia so we just browse uh, and I have a dedicated climate folder um, it's always got to be following this format so you start off with the site name the year the day radiation max temperature, minimum temperature, rain and evapotranspiration. So if you've got a custom weather file, which I have, I've got a folder of weather, go to weather data, um, go to all files, now these can be uploaded as text files provided you've got the right format. I think I'll just go for Launceston here, whatever I've got there, Let's, and when it changes it should pop up. So here's the customary information at the top, so it's got the station number, the station name, latitude, longitude, etc. and then the weather data, none of these should have caps. Also note that it's got an exclamation mark there, that means that AppSim doesn't actually read that line, so if you actually put an exclamation mark in here, it won't, it won't actually read that line in your text file. So the clock, this is saying it wants to go from 19 40 to 1950 which is based on the previous weather file so let's just go back here and see what my MET file so it's from the start of 1970 to uh, it goes to middle of the way through 2017 so let's say it goes let's set the clock to the start of 2017 just so that AppSim doesn't stall so the first of the first 1970 to the 31st of the 12th let's say 2016 just for demonstration purposes. The summary file is what spits out once the AppSim file has done, so if that's successful that'll have a bunch of code there saying what was run. If it's unsuccessful it'll have the errors that turn out there. And here we have the paddock. The paddock's where the main nuts and bolts of the simulation are. So we've got a soil type indicated by that spade icon there. So we have so we have uh, initial water there, so you can go filled from the top or evenly distri distributed. We'll just go filled from the top in this case. Uh, the water is where you actually specify the soil uh, characteristics, soil water holding characteristics. You can identify any different depth, so the default here it's got 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 60 centimetres and so on, down to 3 metres. Uh, let's just assume that our soil is not 3 metres deep, it's, let's say it's only 90 centimetres deep, so let's, I'm just going to remove all of that data below there, and you'll see it gradually get removed out of the simulation. Uh, and then it, in these green and yellow boxes it specifies the different crop types, so these are all for barley, these are all for chickpeas, we're only going to do a continuous simulation with wheat, so I'm going to go in here to manage crops and remove all of those ones that we don't need. Hit delete, hit OK. Try that again because it didn't work for some reason. It seems to like them Today it seems to like them uh, being deleted one by one, so let's just do it that way. Okay, so 
uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure why sorghum uh, and cotton are still there, given that I've deleted them, but I'm assuming if I go out of this and come back to it, no, they're still there, never mind. But uh, a fatal trap can be trying to run a simulation and leaving empty data like this or defining soil depths for which APSIM has no data. So it'll spit an error if you try that in that case. So let's just remove those data again. Hit Just hit delete. And then let's see, let's go over here, whoops, and see if we can re uh, delete all of those data, which are just soil water characteristics. And we're gone. Now let's just go out of here again and go back again. Okay, so they're gone. Notice that the default KS, which is hydraulic conductivity, is left blank. APSIM uses defaults for those, and you'll have to look up the manual to see what they are. And you can put values in if you have measured values. I'm not going to touch those for this simulation. Okay, for soil water, it, remember that the depths have got to match. So here we've got a maximum depth of 90 centimetres. Let's go to this depth here of the same uh, to make sure it's the same. So anything below 90, 70, 90 centimetres is deleted. SWCon is initial soil water condition. MWCon is... Uh, I forget what that is actually. Uh, K-lat is uh, lateral flow, which is horizontal flow in the soil. And again, that's got defaults, but I'll leave that blank for this simulation. These values here uh, define the uh, parameters for the evaporation curves uh, during summer and winter. So cone A is essentially a coefficient for the rate of curvature evaporation, and U is just an initial intercept. And this is when you can define, obviously, if you're in different hemispheres of the globe summer and winter will be defined at the start of different dates so these are the defaults southern hemisphere uh, for APSIM uh, diffusivity constants and diffu diff diffusivity slopes have quite a big impact on the rate of evaporation so if you're trying to accurately simulate uh, measured values of soil moisture perhaps you can go back and modify these two values they have quite an impact soil albedo that's the that's that's related to the colour of the soil, so black soils tend to have a different albedo to white soils. Bare surface, uh, bare soil runoff curve number and, and these values here are also related to the rate with which water is extracted from the soil and has some impact on plant growth. Soil organic matter, now this is where you define the organic content and of the soil, the overall C to N ratio and the C to N ratio of three different uh, soil organic matter pools. So there's a fast pool which is essentially related to biomass, there's an inert pool which is essentially like charcoal and doesn't break down at all but, or break, breaks down very slowly and there's a pool in between which is called F pool 2 and that's calculated by difference between the inert pool and the fresh biomass pool. So again, as before, this has got to be down to 90 centimetres, otherwise APSIM will have an error. These values are greyed out because they're calculated. So just re re delete those there. The default root C to win ratio is 40, and other defaults there, I won't change any of those. Analysis, these values don't actually have an effect, so I'm just going to take out any values below 90 uh, uh, and run the simulation from that. Initial nitrogen, these have quite a big impact on the initial, particularly if you're growing a crop at the start, they have quite a big impact on the rate of growth rate. So let's just take those out again down to 90 centimetres. Also note that you can right click up here and change to kilograms per hectare if that's more meaningful to you. and it, it tends to be that way for me. And just looking at those kilograms per hectare values, they're quite low. So I might just change all of those to 10. Uh, just for illustration purposes and then you've got other values that you can specify out here APSIM uses defaults and so you don't actually have to specify those values to run a simulation so we've got the soil organic uh, matter uh, soil organic matter module uh, and there's the initial surface residue which is assumed to be one tonne to the hectare as well as the initial surface uh, C to N ratio and the amount of residue standing the fertiliser module, which you don't have to touch, but you need to run the simulation. Similarly with the crop component, and here it's wheat. Now here's the manager folder. This is when you define when the wheat's sown, the amount of sowing fertiliser, when it's harvested, and so on. So uh, here we've got the sowing window, so it's saying anywhere between the 15th of May and the 10th of July we can sow. 
Uh, and in this case it's saying, no, I won't sow if I don't get this prescribed amount of rainfall of 25 millimetres over consecutive uh, seven days. And the minimum minimum allowable soil water is 100 millimetres. So I want to change that. I actually want it. I do want to force Apsim to sow, even if it is too dry. Obviously we can only sow wheat, so that's just a drop down box. Here's your sowing density of, well your target initial plant sowing density of 100 plants per square metre. Sowing depth. Cultivar, if you click on that you've got a bunch of different cultivars you can pick uh, from there. I'm just going to pick Hartog in this case. Crop growth class and row spacing, I'm going to change that to it's quite a narrow row spacing in this case, so 150 millimetres. Initial sowing fertiliser, this has a big impact on crop growth, so let's just leave it as 150, which is kilograms per hectare of urea, which is very high. And then harvesting, so obviously we're only harvesting one crop or crop type, which is wheat. Note also that you can go up here to the end of day, and it's got, uh, uh, it allows the ability to enter uh, different codes. For some reason, I'm not quite sure if it's just my version, but when you actually highlight it like that and you actually see uh, a blue space like that which has been tabbed out, Apsim actually has uh, throws an error when it uh, because it's trying to read text uh, that exists down here that isn't actually there. So I tend to go back here, delete any of that white space out after the end if, so it just finishes at the end if. And here you've got your output file, so you've got a bunch of different variables, so here we're just saying in the first column we want date, and then we want these variables. So to add extra variables you can go over here to the component filter, uh, let's just say we want to pick from wheat, and let's just, you've got all of these sorts of variables as well as the units and arrays here, so let's just say we want to add uh, green nitrogen which would be in grams per square metre, uh, senesced leaf nitrogen just for illustration purposes uh, with some grain ones grain nitrogen grain nitrogen concentration in percent and so on and you can pull them out of there also you can add from different components as well so if you go back to MET you can say perhaps perhaps we want to have a look to see what the rainfall is doing on corresponding days here we've got vapour pressure and so on and then we've got reporting frequency uh, this is going to report once a year, every year at harvesting. I don't want that. I want it to report daily. And you can you can click on this output file frequency here to show when it's going to report. So it can be daily, end of day, end of week, end of year, which is different from harvesting. Okay, now I think we're ready to simulate. Hit run. Okay, so that's a classical error if you're trying to run a simulation and it's still in the examples folder, which it is. Okay, so try and save it in a different location. Go to documents there. I'll just put uh, example. Now hit run. And because it's such a long simulation and it's on a daily basis, it'll take a little while to run. But you can see that the process bar is eventually going from left to right there. So we're 15% of the way through now. So just out of interest while that's running, you can go back to your folder that that's actually saved in. Uh, and then you can see the actual outputs spitting out corresponding to the file uh, that you're simulating. So... One of them is called a .sum file, which is summary. The other one's called a .out file, which is, contains all the individual outputs. And you can see the size of those growing over the time the simulation is actually run. So we go back here to example, continuous wheat. Just open it up, and it's on a different file. But you can see that all of these values have already been simulated by AppSim. And so this, this file here will be read by the AppSim output file. So we've got dates, biomass, yield, grain protein, and so on. So we're 70% of the way through. If I just go back to this AppSim file, uh, just to uh, explain some of these variables, the first one is biomass in kilograms per hectare, the next one is yield kilograms per hectare, and if we just scroll down 
corresponding to the dates, you can actually see the crop growing over time. So you can see that biomass getting bigger by the day. Then you can see it starting grain starting to grow, and then it's being harvested on the 12th of the 1st, 1971. And here are all the corresponding outputs. So the simulation is now finished. We go back to the output file. Now let's just say we want to graph that. So there's that corresponding output file. Click here down here on the bottom file, which is graph. Uh, go to graph bits. Let's just say an XY graph. Uh, and let's click on plot there. In the first column we want date, in the second column we want biomass, and we also want yield, but we want yield on the right hand axis. Go back here, click on the, the parent node. Okay, so that's obviously a little bit hard to understand, so let's just take out yield. And so all of those points, essentially you need to look at the top value. So the top value there is going up to almost 17,000 kilograms, which is 17 tonne per hectare. And the lowest one is about 10 tonne per hectare. That graph's a little bit hard to understand, so let's go back to reporting frequency. Let's change that to... Harvesting. run again so that initial output file that I just run will now be overwritten and it'll, it'll only output instead of daily values it'll output annual values and so when we're plotting that that will be a bit simpler obviously you could have post processed that file in, a, in Excel or something uh, but it's much quicker I find just to do it in AppSim replot it again so if you try and open a word file uh, while it's being uh, a text file rather while it's being processed by AppSim you'll get these messages I don't want to reload it because it'll overwrite with the initial values here I just want to demonstrate uh, what I was talking about before with the outputs so we've got uh, the change in grain size we've got estimated soil water we've got green uh, we've got nitrogen in green biomass and grams per square metre we've got senesce leaf nitrogen grain nitrogen grain in concentration and rainfall on any, any given day and you can scroll down here and you can see the date increasing in the first column so we're 85% of the way through by the way don't click on output file while it's running or it'll throw an error because it's changing the values as we go through um, okay so it's 100% of the way through notice now that we've got much fewer outputs so it's only showing one output for each year go back to the graph and that's obviously again a bit awkward so let's plot our histogram in this case so it's doing a line graph we don't really want a line graph we want a bar graph xy and you can see the variation uh, in biomass over time let's also plot the yield note that it's on the other axis and you can see the change in biomass and yield over time so that's it for this one. Cheers. 